Hello there, fight friends. Andy Cotter with MMA.ca here with Kyle Bigfoot Machado, who is just two days removed from his Dana White's Contender Series debut in Las Vegas. Uh, Kyle, thank you very much for speaking with us. And uh, thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited. I'm happy to do the fight, and let's go. Awesome. So, like I just mentioned, you're two days away. You're currently in your hotel room, I'm guessing, in in Las Vegas. How far away are you from the Apex Center? Uh, not too far. I think we are. We should be like ten, fifteen minutes drive from the from the Apex. They don't really know, understand the the driving here, but it's, it's not really far. Yeah. So you're fighting at heavyweight, and the weight limit's two sixty five, and you're you're not quite two sixty five. So you're probably not even really cutting weight, are you? Not at all. No, I'm I'm at two sixty right now. It should be two sixty tomorrow. I'm just keeping myself healthy, eating healthy. Uh, getting a lot of water. It's very dry here because it's the desert and a lot of AC. So the air around is very dry. So I'm trying to keep myself hydrated as much as I can. But besides yes. that, uh, it's it's a regular day for me. I work out a little bit in the morning. I'm gonna go back and work out again uh, later today. But just to keep myself loose and ready to go uh, for Tuesday. Yeah, well, that sounds like the smart thing to do. And and you're in such a lucky position as a heavyweight because. So many other fighters in the lower weight classes, their their last few days leading up to the weigh-ins and the fight, they're miserable because they're cutting weight and they're dehydrated and they're parched and they can't they can't move and everything. So you're just sitting there happy, aren't you? For yourself being heavyweight, uh, we get hit the hardest, but at least we don't need to cut weight. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as most people know who are watching this, if they're watching this or likely a Canadian mixed martial arts fan, you were scheduled to fight at Dana White's Contender Series last year, and you were disappointed because you had visa issues, you couldn't make it into the country, but everything's good now, you're there in Vegas, that's got to be a relief. Tell me how you're feeling right now leading up to this fight and just being a few days away finally from achieving what I'm guessing is, is a dream that you've had for quite a while. 100%. Is, uh, it's it's a long time coming. It's an opportunity. It's a dream come through that I've been working for so long. Uh, it's really good to be here. The feeling, the energy. Uh, I, I'm I really enjoying it right now. I think being um, losing that opportunity last year to do something that's not to the fighting was really disappointing. But actually, at the end of the day, just make me grind a little bit harder. Work work yeah. hard. It's worth the go. And now I'm I'm motivated and like. With uh, other bumps in the road that we have, to, uh, with things outside of fighting or injuries, uh, I, I keep saying like, if I'm making the cage, it's to not is to destroy this guy and get that contract. Yeah, so destroying this guy might be easier said than done. Uh, his name is Kevin Zaflarski. He's from Poland. He's got a record of 11-1, and one, and he's, by all accounts, an excellent fighter, but you're an excellent fighter. So what do you see in him as an opponent that makes you think that this fight can go your way, and, and what sort of planning and preparation have you done for this man? Uh, he, I think the, the biggest thing for on his side, he's a very lanky and tall heavyweight, like he's 6'6". Six, six. Uh, he's going to have definitely, it's going to be definitely one of the two of them few fights that I, I'm going to be the, the shortest guy, but in the other hand, I'm always being the, the, the halfway that moves the most, my footwork and my head movement. Like overall, I moves more and I have a better cardio. I can, I can keep up a better pace than average heavyweights. And because he's that tall, he ends up relying too much on that on the, the reach of that kind of movement. So mm -hmm. he kind of fights lazily, just getting his distance, just finding the distance and going for a decision. And that's when I'm gonna get in and putting pace on top of him and make sure he's gonna get a gas or he's gonna or he's gonna finish him right away in the beginning of the fight. Yeah, we've seen this time and time again where uh, you would assume that the taller fighter has the advantage. And if they play their cards right, if they game plan right, if they practice and they use their their range and their jab and kicks, they can have an advantage. But we've seen many times that the shorter fighter, and you're not even really that much shorter than he is. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can close the distance, you can impose your game style on him, and shorter fighters win all the time. No, hundred percent. It's like what I said. It's not a big. Uh, it's not a big uh, height difference, but it's a. It's not a. It's a little bit different this style of all fighting I've been I've been used to or moving back. I'm the one that usually having using my reach to keep the distance. Right now, I had to adapt this style to work a little bit shorter, but. Uh, with the pace and cardio I have, uh, I don't think he had a chance. Please tell us about your training with Chris Franco at Franco Pancration. 
Franco is one of the most knowledgeable guys I know in this game. Uh, he he's a guy that has been around the game for forever. He he's seen everything. He's done. He's been everywhere, and he's he's a nerd. If you know Chris Franco, he's a nerd. He's like not for not only like he's Marvel and and his yeah. comics, but also on the fighting. So he's a guy who really meticulous. He really studies. He really knows the game, and like. Uh, it, it's a pleasure. We have a great vibe, a great energy, and I, they, I can't say to. I, I don't have. I don't know their words to describe how happy I am with the team and like Chris and I. We are we are in this together, and we are very excited to be here and finally be able to get that you sleep on track. That's great to hear that you have somebody in your corner that's got so much experience. Uh, Chris Frank was really well regarded across Canada. He's been in the game for a long time. He was a fighter himself. So it's kind of good. It must be good for you to know that you have someone in your in your back pocket who has that experience as a fighter himself who knows what you're going through. No, 100%. 100%. Is, and also, we have a good energy together. We've been, we, I've been training with him for around seven, eight years. So we, we, we got our connection to the team. And now it's just like... It's finally coming together. Hmm. So for the people who are watching right now who might not be familiar with you, could you just take a few moments and just talk about yourself and tell us about how your journey came from Brazil to Canada and how you ended up being a fighter? Yeah, 100%. I, I'm from a small city in the interior of Sao Paulo called Presidente Prudente. I, I was born and raised up there. Great family. Big, great, good family over there. A lot of like very nice time, very good time growing up. And I started martial arts around 10, 11 years old. I, I started doing BJJ because I was a little bit too big for my for my size and for my friends and I kind of by accident ended up hurting me death. Mm -hmm. So I needed, my mom, want, my parents wanted me to, to do some martial arts to understand and control my power. And that's where the Jiu Jitsu first cut in my life. I did a little bit of that, but I kind of, I think around two years in, I saw I stopped a little bit on, on the BJJ to play basketball. I played basketball for the city for for a couple of years. Uh, through high school, I played rugby and handball, and just uh, and just around grade twelve, I came to Canada, Nova Scotia, to for an exchange program where got got a great vibe, great experience, but I had to come back right away. And after I come back, I I had the feeling was around what, 2012, 2011, when MMA was getting really big, especially in Brazil, with all the old champions, uh, Aldo, Ernesto Silva, all those guys. So, um, well, I I went back to BJJ and started go, started getting around the guys that were training for the MMA fights and stuff. So, I I started getting excited. I started got more interested on that. Start Muay Thai, start competing with Muay Thai, and that's been a journey for me for a couple of years. Then in Brazil, playing the local scene, I I got a couple of national championships on Muay Thai as an amateur, uh, and that's when I uh, when I was in college doing law school, I decided to that that was in my path, and I came to Canada for a exchange program for work working student program just to kind of figure it out myself, see what's the next play, next step and that's when I started training with Franco and we got the chance to compete at BFL and I fell in love for the cage and that was the rest is history. I've been with seven and one and one, got a little bit bit bus started with a um, draw that I'm not I don't agree with. Uh, won the rematch, got my first loss against a very good opponent on the uh, Dustin Johnson. And after that, I think I just my game, I quit my job, I put all my heart and soul in this game, and I've been undefeated since. Yep. Uh, that's really interesting what you said about Nova Scotia. I, I knew that you came to Canada at some point before, but I didn't realize it was Nova Scotia. Would you mind just talking about your, your connection there and, and your experience at Nova Scotia, what you did and who you met? And then when you decided later on to come back to Canada, how did you pick Vancouver? So I went to Nova Scotia around uh, early 2012, and I did for uh, for a great my grade 12 in high school. I was in, in Dartmouth, uh, just uh, outside of Halifax. Uh, great experience. Had a lot of friends to play rugby during during that time over there. It was it was great. Like I loved the energy, I loved the vibe, I loved 
what I have over there and like that that was the that was the impression that I faced today and you know, even my coach said like I had another six months to finish uh, to to finish my creds but like the a possibility of a scholarship in rugby uh, that kind of not happened because I had to come back and other stuff going on and always felt that it was the experience that I that was cut short. So through the, because of that, I decided to come back a couple of years later when I was on that on that crossroads after law school, and that's Vancouver came because for more than a lot of Nova Scotia is so damn cold. <laughs> yeah, I used to live in Nova Scotia for over twenty years, so I I hear you. Yeah, so the it's so cold, it's so wind, and like I try to pick through the warmest place in Canada, the place that the winter's gonna be the best. And it's like okay, there's a there Vancouver, British Columbia, that's the place to go. Even being a little bit like, expensive to live and all, but that's where we got over there. And a couple of years later, yeah, I with a fiance, a two year old kid, and I'm finally the contender series, and I'm getting a phone track in two days. That's fantastic. That's a great attitude. Uh, so you did say we, and then you mentioned you have a fiance and a, and, a, and a young child. Tell me about them. Tell me about your fiance, how you met her, and what was so special that drew you to her. And and t- talk to uh, you know what it's like being a father and how that's changed you as a man. Uh, I met my fiance when I when, when I was bartending back in the day. Uh, through my first couple of fights, as I was doing college here. And, Part time, I was bartending full time, and I was training. So, through my first three or four fights, that was that was a very, very long journey for me, and uh, I had to, to deal with all that. I was one day just bartending after a long weekend, or I think it was a Monday or something like that, and I was like, it was one of those days you you have to go because you are on the schedule, but don't really want to be there. Yeah, and and like that was like. Four or five guys, four or five people in the bar. No one really, nothing really was, go, was going on. And then that girl showed up by herself. Apparently, her friends stood her up and Ooh. just got, she went out for a, for a smoke. I went out to say hi and <laughs> conversation started over there. We And we clicked right away. It's one of those relationships that. I knew at this spot that, that that's a nice girl. That's a girl that like worth the investment. I was right off a of four year relationship breakup. It was like I had a long set relationship in college and to my first couple of years here in Canada. She came my ex came with me and she but she didn't adapt it, so she left. So mm-hmm. when we met this girl, I wasn't really looking for it uh, for a serious relationship or anything, but and this thought I knew that that wasn't being going there and worth it to invest it. And we went from there. Uh, fast forward a couple of years later, uh, during the pandemic, doing all this mess, she, she figured out she was pregnant. We had, um, and, we, and we had a, we had this beautiful, beautiful baby boy, Leo. He's, he's two year olds right now. And he's my everything. He's my little buddy. He's my best guy. And, <laughs> I I I work all, all my work is for that. I can I miss it already being here, but I know. Well, that's great. So now that you're a father, do you think that makes you a better fighter, or does that have no effect at all? Because now that you've got something really to fight for. Oh, 100 percent. Every every time I step in the cage, every time I step for, in the gym for training, I know it's for the little guy. I know there's so much more in the line than just myself. So. Hundred uh, percent. That that's make not I'm not necessarily a better fighter, but I'm hungrier. Nice. So let's talk about your future with the UFC. You're you're confident going into this fight in two days. You said you're going to be getting the contract. So what happens after that? You're going to get, uh, you know, presumably like a three fight contract, maybe, and be fighting for a couple of years. What kind of progress do you see for yourself? And how often would you want to fight? Uh, I like to be active, but the last best. But the past couple of years, because of the contender series and the visas, and the not sure, the not sure what's going on, it was very frustrating for me because I like to get busy. To see my 2021, that was my best year, and that was when I get when I got that kind of momentum. Uh, that I felt great. Like at each fight, I was developing more and, and exploring my game in different ways. So. 
that's what I plan to do. I want to be busy right off the bat. Three fights a year at least and keep, keep the ball rolling. And I will, and with the division the way it is and my game the way it's right now, I, I want to, I'm looking to be a champion in a couple of years. That's fantastic. Well, the heavyweight division is one of those divisions where, you know, that's, there's not, I'm not going to say there's not a lot of competition, but compared to the other weight classes where there are just numerous fighters in them, heavyweights, you know, it's it's a possibility. 100%. I think heavyweights in one of the most interesting stages in years. I think it's very top heavy right now. The top four or five guys in the top of the division are, are very interesting to me. There's some guys coming up and some stuff going on that really, re, I'm really excited to see and to to share the kid with a couple of those guys, but overall, it's when I get there, I'm looking to take over. Imagine this scenario. It is the year 2027, uh, December 2027, UFC 264, and Kyle Machado is taking on John Jones for the UFC Heavyweight Championship. How does that sound? Oh, don't worry. That will happen way before 27. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, great. That's way. 2027 is way too far for that. It's like five five years removed. I I don't think John will stay around by then, and I, I I'm planning to beat him before that. Nice. So, what's it like being uh, in Vegas right now? It's a little bit different for the, the, than a than a card like a like a numbered card where you're you'd be at a fight hotel and there's lots of fans around and you're doing all sorts of media, tons of media over the place. It's really hectic. I, I've been to a bunch of those and. You know, the fighters, if they make themselves in the public, they, they don't get much rest. Uh, in the UFC Apex in there, it's a lot quieter. There's not a lot of fans. There's only, you know, a few people there in the UFC Apex. Uh, yeah. You know, what's your state of mind right now? Are you are you at peace? Are you ready to go? Do you want to fight right now? Are you okay to wait for two days? How are you feeling overall? I'm good. I'm enjoying the process. The, the, all Everything about being in Vegas, being on the free fight routine, everything. Uh, Excite, excites me, and I'm just here. For, I'm enjoying the ride, but I know the the big loops and the fun spot, fun uh, stuff's gonna happen. Uh, and on Tuesday night, when I get the contract, when I finally step on the octagon, and I can't wait for that. Like I can't wait for that. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this for sure. But the 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 apex, if you want to say, off the the trip is gonna be finally stepping up there and get a contract right after. Yeah, something else to enjoy right now that you might not have thought about is that you can walk around in public and most people look at you have no idea who you are. Well, after a few wins in the UFC, that might change. Have you ever thought about, you know, your lifestyle and what that's going to be like in the future when you're going to be more widely recognized? Uh, you know, I'm a little bit show off, so really, I really don't care. Really, that would really get flattered when people recognize me and come to me to, to say, to, to say, oh, I've been watching your fights with BFL or here and there. But uh, I'm I'm a regular guy. I, I just like to spend time with my family, do my training, do my singing. Like I train, I spend time with my boy, my fiance, and I go back to bed. I I don't party. I don't drink much. I don't I don't go out at all. I it's it's a simple life. I'm a, I'm a dad. I'm a father. I have a a father. Yeah. I can really go. I can't really go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're kind of tied to your family, but that's a good thing. But I love it. I love it. It's a chill life. Get me focused. Get me uh, my head on the right place. And I couldn't ask for anything else. Well, that's fantastic, Kyle. It sounds like you're you're happy and you're content where you are. Uh, and that's going to change greatly in a couple of days. Um, you know, you're confident and a lot of people think you're going to be winning this fight. So uh, I don't really have anything else to add. Is anybody you'd like to thank or any final words before we go? Yeah, first I want to thank you for having me to show. It's always a, pl it's a pleasure to talk. It's the first time we actually got to talk in person. So it's my MMA.ca debut, and that's nice. And I want a big shout out to my team uh, at FPP MMA and at Lens Gibbs, uh, Gibson MMA that are that were pretty much where I did most of the camp. Chris Franco, Lance Gibson that would be on the corner beside you, the Martin. Uh, but uh, like Gibson Jr., all, you know, Akio, all the guys that have been grinding with me every day, everyone that's here with me in Vegas, uh, and all my sponsors and the team that actually supports my, my journey and let me help be there. So 
Mutant, Go Radio Podcast, The Happy Brewery Company, um, New Edge Alliance, um, Strike Recovery, Particles Jam. Sorry, I my mouth is really dry now. No, don't be sorry. Okay, Kyle. Uh, no, I want to speak with you for a minute after we hang up, so don't hang up yet, but I'm yeah. just going to sign off now. Uh, thank you One so second. much for speaking I'm with me. I'm not done with my guys, but I want to thank also my manager, uh, first of all. Oh, of course. Man, um, for media, best news, YVR, Best Ways in Integration, AKV, AKV Accounting, everyone that's been supporting me all through this journey. And let's go. I can't wait to, to get a contract. Let's go. Well, a lot of people think that fighting is a is a solo sport. You're doing it by yourself, but you know that's not the truth. You just said a whole bunch of names, so you've got a whole big family behind you supporting you, and and you know that you know doing it without them be much more difficult. Hundred percent. Like there's all this team, everyone that supports to help me to like keep up with my journey to be able to do that full time. Uh, also, my fiance that that's big, being helping with taking care of our son. I take most of the load if I without her, I definitely wouldn't be able to to do this at all. So yeah, I'm the one stepping up in the cage, but I know like yeah. with me, I'm carrying all these people uh, with me. I'm just the representative. I'm just the guy that's yeah. up there. But all this team, all these people that's around, they 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 part. They are part of this journey for sure. Well, Kyle, you've got a great attitude, and I wish you the best of luck, and I'm sure the MMA viewers are wishing you best of luck, too. Uh, we'll all be tuning in on Tuesday night to watch you in Dana White's Contender Series. Best of luck, and we hope you uh, kick some butt. Let's go. Cool. All right. Talk to you later. Talk to you.